All right, guys, before we get into the game analysis, I just wanna thank the sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. NordVPN provides you a secure encrypted tunnel for online traffic to flow. Basically, that just means nobody can see through that tunnel and get access to your internet data. If a movie or TV show isn't available in your country, then simply just change your virtual location so that you can watch all your favorite stuff. I don't know how long you guys have been following me, but the USL Championship used to stream all of their games on YouTube anywhere in the world. But then they partnered with ESPN Plus, and now you need an ESPN Plus subscription if you're located in the Americas. If you had NordVPN, all you'd have to do is switch your location over to England, and boom, now you can stream all of the USL Championship games on YouTube for free. When I've used other VPNs at times, I've noticed my internet speed slows down drastically. But NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there, and that's because NordVPN can encrypt all of your traffic, which means your internet service provider can't slow down your internet speeds. So if you guys are interested in checking out NordVPN and maybe using it to stream some of my matches in the USL Championship, then go to nordvpn.com elite to get a two-year plan plus four additional months for a huge discount. Thank you very much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. What's going on guys and welcome back to another game analysis video. This is the 14th game of the season and in this game my team FC Tulsa is taking on Atlanta United 2. So prepare yourselves though because this is probably our second worst performance of the year and our first worst performance of the year was the first time we played these guys at their place and we lost 5-0. So really poor performance from the team to be honest. A very poor game for me. Very unhappy with how I played in this game. But you know these are the games where you really learn the most from because you learn from your mistakes watching your best plays isn't really going to make you improve as much as watching your mistakes anyway real quick I'm number 13 Matt Sheldon I'm playing right back this game and that lineup for the most part was uh was all correct so Atlanta United's in black they start with the kickoff we're in white they opt to uh, just keep the ball in their own half, ping it around for a little bit, and we slowly push up the field. Here's my very first play in the game. The ball's going to come into my guy, and since his back is towards our goal, I'm getting right up on his back, pressuring him, giving him a little bump, and making it difficult for him to, uh, to bring that down. Very good pressure from the start. I mean, it's the first minute of the game. Very high pressure, very good. Now, Bradley Bourgeois is kind of clipping in the ball to me, like a little chip ball right on the sideline. There's nobody for me to bounce it to, so I'm just going to clip that over my shoulder into Marlone and then continue on that that one two down the field receive the ball now immediately I'm looking at Lebo Meloto here and both of these players are already starting to move into read it it's dangerous especially in the second minute of the game to lose the ball right there so I'm going to take another touch draw this guy inside and now that passing lane opens up for Mo across the field there so I'm kind of baiting that ball into Lebo and then playing it out to Mo uh, then the next play here, ball is popping up over to me. I'm just going to head the ball right into Marlone. He tries to flick it on, just misses it slightly, and then it's out for a throw-in. Next play, Bourgeois is going to play me out the ball. I'm going to receive it, turn, immediately open up my body, look at my defender, and look up the field to see my passing options. You can just see the shadow of Rodrigo, but he's popping perfectly right in this pocket. I wanted him to turn out there, uh, so I played that opposite side of this body, but it's just a little bit off there. Marlon heads the ball up and then I'm just getting up and winning that second header. And then again, pretty good pressure from us as a team. Ball comes out kind of like backwards after a deflection here. You can see Austin, he's telling me turn, turn, turn because Geop right here is starting to bait that and he's starting to wait for me to pass back to my goalkeeper. So I'm going to do a little step over the ball, push it up the field down the line and then just clip it down the line and uh, hopefully we can regain possession, and we do out there. Throwing the ball to Rodrigo, he's gonna play it right back to me. I'm looking over at Mo, but again, I'm kind of drawing in this guy so then I can play back into Bourgeois. I mean, I could hit that to Mo. I think that's a fine ball, but I don't, you know, a big thing on our team is don't overcomplicate it. Ball's coming into Rodrigo now. I could even be another few yards higher here for a good bounced, you know, pass inside to outside. I'm a little bit behind, so I don't take my touch forward. And you can see his momentum now flying towards the line. Rodrigo's in a good spot. I'm going to take my touch inside against those momentum, play into Rodrigo, and then get up. And he tries to find Marlone, but the ball's just a little bit uh, behind him. Uh, just starting to pressure now. Wiley out on the uh, the wing. A little deflection there, and it kind of hits our own post. Kind of scary there. And then immediately here, I can feel Wiley really, really applying a lot of pressure. So I'm just going to pop right in between the ball and him. And as soon as I feel that contact in the back, go down and uh, and get the foul. 
Now, this is my dumbest mistake of the game. I'm receiving the ball. I'm looking up. I'm not seeing what I want. I feel like the passing angles aren't, aren't there. Bird's right behind this guy. And instead of just playing back to Bourgeois here or f going over to Mo, I try to force it into Rodrigo. It's it's dumb. I wasted way too much time on the ball there. And uh, is a very stupid turnover there. But I was a little frustrated with just – I felt like I, we were stagnant up top. And, again, looking forward now, trying to find a passing lane in Rod Rodrigo, the 10, somebody up there. I wish I could see more of the field to really see if there's a better options looking forward or if I'm missing something. But you can see I'm scanning over my my shoulder just to see where the pockets of space are, where my team's movements are, and where I should play the ball. And now I have a good angle. I'm calling for the ball once again, checking my shoulder, and I'm now I have a good spot past this defender now to take my touch forward and start to drive i'm driving head up picking up my head and then trying to find rodrigo right in this pocket you can see how overloaded they are on the side it'd be great to have someone right here so we can get the ball right in the center and switch out to the other side because this is a tough ball right in there and, and i mean it gets to rodrigo but he, there's players surrounding right around him there Clip ball over to the opposite side now, just applying pressure. And then here, when I go to block, I need to use my right leg there and stay open because as soon as I close off and turn my body, you know, Wiley sees that perfectly, cuts, does actually two great cuts. I do it again. He recognizes it again, cuts me up again. I'm in the spin cycle now. I have no idea which way is up or which way is down. But I do a good job to recover and block the, uh, the that final cross. But that it's just the body positioning and raising up the right leg so I can stay face towards him. Uh, just winning the header there from a crossed in ball. And then Jorge does a good job to bring it down. And then ball's popping up here. This is a 60-40 now in favor to um, Stanley here. I still fly in. And he. I think he tries to meg me or, or and it just kind of pops right around me. But since I'm a little bit late, I need to break down. And I can't just go flying in there because a good player like him is going to recognize that. He's at the ball first. And then uh, he attacks. And then uh, penalty is called from on Mojadama. I think it's soft to be honest, but you know, as you'll see here in the future, I don't want to spoil spoil anything, but the ref was very consistent with this. Um, Giop is, is a smart player as well and knows exactly what he's looking for. He gets in front of Jadama, and then as soon as he feels a little contact, even if it's a little contact, he goes down and earns his team a penalty. So it's a smart move on their part. And then uh, 25th minute now sinks it. Great penalty. And uh, we're down 1-0 in the 25th minute. Pretty frustrating. Pretty frustrated right now. I, I, I really think that this was a, a tough game from us possession Why? And not even possession. We had decent possession, but it was all possession, just playing back to the center backs, playing back to the goalkeeper in our own half. The, uh, the attack was lacking here. Now, switching ball out once again to Wiley. We were just so compact in the middle that all those switching balls were just killing us. You can see how, how tight we are in the center there. Anyway, receiving the ball, once again, looking forward, looking forward. Lebo Melota's in a good spot, good pocket of space right here for him to turn. So I'm just going to cut the ball back and play right into Meloto and tell him turn so he can now face the field. And this is a good little combination right there. But again, it's just something's off and we don't complete it. It's just sloppy play, uh, but we still maintain the ball here. Meloto plays me down, having some back pressure play back into him. And now we're switching the ball once again. Good little combination there on the side. Now the ball is going to come into Wiley on the sideline. I'm getting tight. I have to be careful again because it's kind of it's kind of a 60-40 ball in favor of Wiley. So I'm getting a little lucky there with that first pressure, blocking it, and then just a couple, and the ball just bounce around. I don't know how they get out of that, but they do. It's a great play again, and then Stanley's on the attack on that opposite side now. Uh, switching ball to me, not the best clearance. Mar Marlon's going to head it back down and then just pressuring. Here, you can see Marlon, I'm taking the overlapping run. He's pointing, take the overlapping guy. Marlon's going to come in on number 13, Wiley. But again, Wiley cuts it in. It's a good cut, uh, but nothing really comes out of it here. Maloto's going to play me out the ball now. I'm going to take my touch, look forward. I'm looking down the line. Uh, I, I wish the camera was a little bit farther out so I could see my options, see what I should have done. But I obviously don't like what I see. Um, so I'm going to cut the ball back. And then now Maloto's checking his shoulder. I'm going to play it over to him so he can switch out to the other, other side. Um, but yeah, it's, this is the hard part about the game analysis. When the cameras, you can only see like the back line. It's It'd be great if we could see the uh, what I'm looking at. Um, anyway, receiving the ball now, looking forward again, you could, I'm looking forward I, and I just, I'm either looking for a checking run into the pocket or a run curling run into the channel into space or something again, just not liking the, the movement. So I, I'm doing a little bit too much on the ball and it's just too much. It's not, it's not the best. 
And uh, and then here in the 42nd minute, Rodrigo goes and just kind of, again, is looking for the contact. Cam and Feo is right behind him. He gets a little contact, and as soon as he feels that that touch, he falls down and earns the penalty. I'll let you guys be the judge to see um, if you thought both were a penalty or if neither were a penalty or if one or the other was. But I think that the ref was pretty consistent on both of those, which was good. But unfortunately, Rodrigo then uh, misses the penalty. It's a good save from the keeper. He reads him right. And unfortunately, it's still 1-0 now to go into the uh, into the halftime break. Uh, just the final few minutes, ball's coming out to me. I think that's a great ball. That's the, that's the run that I'm really looking for, curling down. And now final few minutes of the second half, I'm taking my touch. There's tons of space, so I'm opening up. I have a lot of back pressure coming, so I'm going to start taking my touch and driving inside just to cut that player off. Rodrigo's popping into space, but this player's doing a very good job to recognize that, anticipate that, and almost starts to weed that out. So again, I'm going to drive again. But then right here, immediately on this touch, I'm looking over at Marlon, but Rivas is making a good check run I think I should play right into Rivas here and then he can pop the ball out to Marlon but get a little bit of pressure play right into Marlon continue my run forward but at this point um, Camden failed as a great tackle there and I'm, I'm pretty dead on that sprint and then now final play of the game or sorry of the first half just a throw in I'm asking for the ball back I'm looking to hit that first time it's a tough bouncing ball in maybe I should have taken a touch but still get into the box and then the referee blows the whistle there so that's the first half and uh exactly what I, I described before like I thought that it was kind of a dead game from us, a stagnant game. And I thought that I did, you know, too much on the ball, trying to like looking for too much instead of just playing sometimes the simple pass and got caught a few times and uh, just tough. I mean, look, we, we had two shots on goal, two shots total. And one of those was the, was the penalty. Uh, so Atlanta United too is really outplaying us. The possession is pretty even, but I think the possession in dangerous areas is is not even at all. That I think the possession is kind of uh, skewed there. Now here is the start of the second half. We're going to start with the kickoff. Just a few passes through the midfield and then back, just keeping possession of the ball. Here's my very first touch of the second half. You can see Stanley. I think this is Stanley is rounding his run, really cutting off the line. So I'm taking my touch inside. Eric's doing a good job to check his shoulder. Good little passing angle there, popping it back out to Bradley. So good play. Good play all. Good build up there. Uh, once again, ball's coming out to me. Eric's in a great pocket of space now, right in between all these players. Tons of time. I'm going to play into him, tell him time, and uh, good little play there. So now he can turn, decides to play me back the ball. And once again, cutting off the line here. So now I'm going to take my touch inside and exploit this space away from this player's momentum. So I'm going to take my touch inside here, just get in front of the ball, play back to Bradley. And we're doing a decent job keeping it here in the second half. The second half was much better than the first half. It wasn't great but it was a lot better. Ball's gonna pop back out to me now. You can see how tight it's getting over here. There's not many passing options looking forward. I'm trying to kind of pop this into uh, into Rivas up there, but it's uh, not the best ball, kind of rushed as well. And then just a little sloppy pass from Meloto. He usually doesn't do that. And right here, counterattack, four V three, and then Atlanta United capitalize there. So it's uh, unfortunate and, um, you know, it, it, it's frustrating, but that's what happens. I mean, you make one mistake and a, a good side like Atlanta United 2 or it, most professional teams are going to either capitalize on it or create a very dangerous chance off that mistake. So it happens. Even the best players in the world will do that. But uh, just just pretty frustrating in this game now to be down 2-0 and uh, have to kind of dig our way out of it now going forward. Next play in the game is going to be a good ball right into the center of the 18. Both our center backs are kind of preoccupied with Geop here, so I need to come inside and mark this guy. I can't be wide. I do a good job to come in, and as soon as he plays it wide, uh, just get wide and then make my body big and make the block there. Throw in for Atlanta. Ball's just kind of over my head, just bringing the ball down with that touch, and then Maloto uh, just builds out there. And now here on this overlapping run, I'm taking the runner now. I'm checking over my shoulder, looking at Austin. I'm not liking what I'm seeing as far as the forward, where the forward's at, so I don't decide not to play it back to him. So I'm going to take my touch outside and then try to clip it down the line, but uh, my touch was just out of bounds there. Ball comes into Bradley. He's going to head it over my 
head, I'm going to bring it down. And then here I'm looking right at Marlone. He's offside right now. So I'm kind of just stalling, waiting a few seconds until he pops right on side. And as soon as I think he's on side, I'm going to play him the ball, play him the ball now. And now he can attack. And it's a great attack. He plays the ball right into Rodrigo and Rodrigo, Rodrigo da Costa with another goal there in the 55th minute. So very, very good play. I think defensively good play from Bradley and then a great drive ball into the box from Marlon and a really just tidy finish from Rodrigo to, to uh, be aggressive, slide in there, get a touch. And now we're two one. So starting to dig our way out. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do and I, and we really still aren't creating that many chances as well. And I think this is a big thing in this game. It's like, we really need to create more chances going forward. And you can see, I, this is like the few times I'm getting the ball in this half, receiving the ball now driving forward, playing out to Marlon, Marlon, good one V one move. And then, uh, uh, a tackle from Wiley. And I think they, yep, they call it for a foul there. Uh, ball comes out to me tons of time. I'm looking forward. Uh, and it's starting, you know, Stanley, once again, is starting to cut off the line. So I'm going to take my touch inside now because I don't want to just play down the line into that pressure. Uh, Rodrigo is in a good spot in that pocket, but still it would be a threaded ball for that. So I play into Eric and then he plays back to Bradley. A uh, little combination out here, really good play right back to Eric. Little sloppy of a ball there, uh, but we get lucky that the, that the touch wasn't perfect there. And then now pressuring, great pressure from our front. It's going to come back to me. I'm going to receive the ball, play right into Eric, pop right into the middle of the space. And now I'm looking at this player. He's starting to uh, apply pressure and step forward. So there's a good little pocket to play Eric right in between this now. He can take his touch forward and then just gets clipped in the, uh, the ankle back there and we earn a free kick. Next play in the game, long ball. I was going to head it forward. I was trying to find Eric, not the best header, but it bounces right out to me. I'm going to bring that down because I have some time. I'm looking forward now and just clipping the ball right into Rivas. And that's a, that's a good play. Good ball, good run by Rivas into that a good pocket there. And then 82nd minute, you can see up top, uh, Leo Fola comes in for me. So that is the end of my night there. Not, not a good game. I mean, it, it just overall, there's not much attacking threat from us and from me in, in specifically. And just not not the best. I think it was a very sloppy game. I don't want to even say it was a hot and humid day, but I don't even want to say that as an excuse because Atlanta United's playing the, in the same exact conditions that we are, but just not a good performance from us overall. We always seem to struggle to play these younger MLS reserve teams. It feels like we have our worst games against Sporting Kansas City 2 and Atlanta United 2. But anyway, that's the game, two to one. And then here are the match stats from tonight. And as you can see, the possession is pretty even. And it's it's funny because it did not feel like that in the game. But like I said, all of our possession was kind of just building and all of their possessions seemed to be around R18 and them just flying and attacking us. And you can kind of tell from the shots. I mean, they had 17 shots to R7. So we definitely got outplayed in that aspect. But. We definitely do come back, though, and have a good streak of games coming up here soon. So anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.